you're safe to just allow yourself to rest where you are and be conscious, be aware of the sensations in your body, the sensations in your feet as they're on the floor, sensations in your butt as they're on your chair or on your back as you lie down, or the feeling of air on your face. You're safe to actually just allow yourself to be as you are in this experience and to be aware of it. A lot of our mental and emotional resources, our attention, our energy, our time, and it goes all towards something away from us. Do you ever find that suspicious that we're conveniently always lost in the external world or in our own thoughts? If you look at your own attention, you'll notice that the majority of what it goes to is your own thoughts. It's stuck in there in this sort of unconscious-like fashion, or objects in the external world. Your attention very rarely goes to your actual experience, what you're feeling, to just being aware of thoughts, to investigating your actual self. Your attention is very rarely reflected back into your own internal world. We're constantly escaping our own subjectivity. We're escaping our own true nature. We're escaping the present experience. We're escaping our own inner world. The actual self that you believe you are, right? the self that you believe I'm talking to right now, is an illusion. It's not actually real in the sense that it doesn't have any real independent or separate existence. The sense of self that we take ourselves to be is a very clever illusion that constructs itself in response to various pains that we experience growing up, the reality of impermanence, and the sense of a lack of a definite and permanent self. The ego is what I'm talking about, the identity. And there's nothing wrong or bad about the ego. There's nothing to attack about yourself. The thing is, though, is that the ego constructs itself in childhood. And it does this in order to avoid pain, in order to create a sense of permanence, in order to create a sense of stability, structure in the world so that we can survive, basically navigate reality in an effective way so that we can survive, which there's nothing bad with. The problem is that a lot of these strategies, a lot of these patterns, they get deeply ingrained in us. They get stuck in our subconscious and our unconscious mind. And what was once functional in childhood becomes dysfunctional as an adult. You reach a stage in your development where you can begin to let go of these egoic patterns so you can experience greater psychological well-being physical well-being, emotional well-being, greater relationships, a more fulfilling career that's actually aligned with your intrinsic motivation and very genuinely helps people, greater spiritual development. And the ego is perfectly fine, right, up until that point of your own development, up until the point where you can't really move forward because it ends up being this roadblock. So what was once functional in childhood becomes dysfunctional after a certain point. And the ego is a relatively early stage of human development. And this is what the majority of our species is stuck in. We're stuck in relatively low levels of development and what I'm talking about in this video is more so related to self-actualization and self-transcendence. I'm talking about spiral dynamics stage yellow and stage turquoise, or in the ego development theory model, uh, I believe the autonomous stage and the construct aware stage and the unitive stage. So the ego is all about manipulating reality in order to survive by <laughs> creating a solid sense of myself 
and other. And this is a very clever illusion that the human mind constructs. It's an ongoing thing that the mind constructs. And once this pattern gets built up, it has this sort of karmic effect where in, you know, one moment, one mind moment, really, um, there's this grasping onto thought, grasping onto sensation, tension and constricting in the body. And it's this kind of conditioning that perpetuates itself from one mind moment to the next mind moment. And the reason why I'm saying mind moment is because, you know, you slice up each moment in time. This is something that the mind does. So from one moment to the next, this conditioning kind of just carries itself on and it creates this illusion of like a continuous, solid, fixed sense of self. But it's really just a bunch of elaborate systems and conditioning that just perpetuates itself without your real awareness of it because you don't really pay much attention to your experience if you're being very honest with yourself. You don't pay much attention to your own thoughts, right? Just watching them, not being identified with them, just observing them, allowing them to arise and pass. You don't spend much time noticing the amount of tension that your body holds, right? The hell that you actually put your body through by constricting your identity to just a body and a mind, to the ego, to a solid fixed sense of self, right? There's tensions in your body, your gut, it's habitually tense, your heart, you can feel closed, your shoulders are raised, your legs, your arms, and there's subtle forms of tension and then there's very gross and obvious forms of tension. Right? You don't really feel, you don't feel what's going on in your body very much. You avoid your sensations, right? You kind of grasp on to thoughts. You find your whole sense of self in thought. Right? You find your entire self-image in thought. When I ask you, who are you? The first thing you start referencing is your own thoughts, which is okay, right? It's, it's useful. But like I said, the ego only works up until a certain level of development. And then we have to actually investigate these unconscious systems that construct the fixed permanent sense of self and deconstruct them. Right? We have to pay very close attention to the workings of our own psychology so that we can experience greater levels of human health. And self-actualization and self-transcendence are human needs, meaning that without them, you actually become sick. You actually experience forms of sickness, just like how when your body doesn't receive vitamin D, it becomes vitamin D deficient. It's the same thing with a human who does not self-actualize and self-transcend. These things are needed to maximize your health and well-being. And there is no real healing without self-transcendence, without self-actualization. It just doesn't really happen. We can lie to ourselves and say that it does, but it, it really doesn't. So you're safe to actually begin to let go of the various structures that you take yourself to be, the belief structures, the struct, the energetic tensions in your body, the physiological structures that you hold there that all work together to create the cohesive sense of who you are, the emotional avoidance patterns, emotional avoidance structures, because once you begin to really apply awareness to all these things, the ego over time naturally begins to dissolve. It's a long-term developmental process of the ego constructing itself and then deconstructing itself. And what was once functional in childhood, all those patterns become dysfunctional later on in life when you want to reach higher levels of consciousness and well-being. A good example of this is if there's a young girl who in her childhood was emotionally neglected. She couldn't really count on people to get her needs met. Right? So as a byproduct of that survival condition, she had to become more independent. Right? And then later on in life, right, as time goes on, this independence, this hyper-independence you know, builds up. It you know, has some momentum behind it. 
and she just experiences herself to just be this, right? Various patterns sort of begin to build up a momentum. And by the time you're 18, 20 years old, you don't even understand what just happened to get you to that point where you really feel like, oh, I'm just like a self. I'm just an ego. I'm just my body and my mind, right? So all that conditioning up until one point Let's say that girl decides to enter a relationship. She'll notice that she has trouble receiving help. She has trouble letting other people in because her independence also puts up certain blocks inside of her. Her independence rejects certain energy flows from entering her life because deep down and in her psyche, she's still subtly believing that she can't really depend on others and it's still perpetuating itself so that hyper-independence in childhood was a survival adaptation. It was very helpful. And then in the context of her, you know, first relationship, we'll say at age like 18 to 20 or something like that, whatever, it quickly revealed itself to be dysfunctional, right? And this was a part of her ego that had to kind of dismantle itself say it was a very core structure. So you're safe to really begin to investigate the nature of your own self, the nature of this experience. The best part about this consciousness work that I'm talking about here is that you don't have to believe what I say. This isn't about watching a YouTube video, believing what Lucas says, right? Like I'm some preacher up here. No, you don't have to believe what a scientist in a lab coat says. You don't have to believe what some enlightened <laughs> being says because you know, you project all this stuff onto these enlightened beings and they're so holy and they can do no wrong and all this stuff, even though they're just regular people still. <laughs> it's you that can become conscious. It's you that has to actually listen to yourself more and apply more attention to yourself. It's not about just believing in like these like spiritual sounding ideas of enlightenment or, or awakening. It's about you actually investigating your own self, your own psychology, your own sensations, your own tensions within the body, right? It's very habitual, these tensions and these uh, reactions and this identification you have with thought, with emotion, right? Your thoughts, emotions, and tensions are all working together in such a way to constrict you and create this sense of solid, small self. And once you can actually just witness these things, they dissolve. They kind of act like a glue. Your thoughts, emotions, and your like body tensions and constrictions, all these things, they work together and they're like all kind of glued to each other and they create the sense of ego. And the sense, the, the second you're able to begin passing awareness through them, Right? It's like your awareness can like transparently enter you. Right? It begins to undo these structures. It dissolves naturally like an ice cube in hot water. The ice cube just organically melts the second you put it in the hot water. And in a sense, we can say that the ice cube is like the ego and the hot water is like awareness. Right? The ego is like this like frozen, hardened part of existence, or so it appears to be that until you begin to examine it closer. <laughs> and then it melts away into just this, you know, cup of water, this, this pure, empty, uh, luminous awareness, this empty awareness. So you're very safe to just really begin to look into your avoidance patterns. You're safe to just start to watch your thoughts rather than be identified with them. You're safe to just allow yourself to be in your body. You're safe to just allow yourself to feel what comes up. You're safe to just allow yourself to exist in this moment without having to like exert your will upon life to just like take moments to just rest. To just be conscious of your experience rather than always lost in the sauce of it. 
lost in your own conditioning, lost in the beliefs of what you should be doing or what you shouldn't be doing. You're safe to just be here. You're safe to just be held by this experience. Like I said, without actually raising your consciousness, it's impossible to experience the greatest levels of human well-being. These are very natural stages of development that occur within the human psyche. Self-actualization, self-transcendence. Right? Like I said, these are human needs. Without them, it's impossible to be as healthy as you can possibly be. Right? When you don't raise your consciousness, every other area of your life suffers. Your relationships, career, your emotions, the thoughts that you have, the quality of the thoughts that you have, your mental health, even your physical health, because all these things are interconnected. And so we got to take this holistic approach to our existence. We have to realize that all of these things center around our sense of ego, our sense of identity, our level of consciousness. Reality is always being filtered through who we believe we are, through the level of consciousness that we have. And you're safe to really just begin to raise yours and let go of all the things that got you up to where you are now, but aren't going to take you to where you want to be. So that's it for this video. I'm offering one-to-one -one coaching. You can apply to work with me. Link is in the pinned comment and the description. Take it easy.